Welcome back, everybody. We are live with SWF Shootout. Welcome back to the show. We have got a stacked card for you as we get closer, one show closer to Gold Rush and some tournament finales. We are here in Atlanta, Georgia, and there's a big kerfuffle going on right now. Siler Jordan and Alex Corzo back and forth on Twitter. After Siler tapped Alex Corzo out in the last episode, Siler Jordan put out a challenge to Alex Corzo to face him tonight here on Shootout in the main event and give him a title shot at that. So Siler Jordan coming out as you can see uh, here in this tweet, it says, How you feeling after I tapped you out at SWF Shootout? Did nearly ripping your stupid face off in my WTF lock earn your respect? You sure you want a title shot? And then, of course, Alex Corzo says, What's more important, the victories or the title? Corzo feels like Siler Jordan is more interested in the victories than the title. But nonetheless, Alex Corzo accepted that challenge to face Tyler Jordan here in the main event tonight. What is that? What does Duke Zenda have to say about that after going through that entire tournament to get the opportunity to face him? We'll have to see. But along with all that, we will have our faces versus freaks match tonight as well. Evelyn Reeves, Zach Graves, Kid Hades, Laura Draven take on Hunter King Vice, Lance Romance, and Leo McKay. This match was pushed from the last episode because Leo and Kid Hades got into it in the back. Oh, that is, that's intense. We got Ryan Adams on the show. Amari Williams taking on Brett Storm. Elliot Collins taking on Savage John Robb and, of course, that main event. But let's get things going here tonight. Ryan Adams versus Jackson Montgomery. Here we go. The lights are bright. But they go down as soon as this man enters the arena. Ryan Adams. I'm really, I really like what I've been seeing from Ryan Adams. I like, I like what I've been seeing from last season, coming in to this season. Uh, last season he kind of wasn't uh, having the best go at things, and this season a little bit as well. As he faced off against Vice and uh, was in one of those eight men. Battle Royals for the uh, Maverick Championship, no more contendership, which is, of course, Jay Wolf and, uh, or excuse me, was Jay Wolf and Bruiser Brad. It is now Jay Wolf going on to face off against Seb Abbott. So that, oh, I'm pretty pumped up to see that match, just to see how Seb Abbott handles being in the ring with somebody like uh, Jay Wolf. So. Ryan Adams making his way down to the ring. I like everything about this guy. He is taking on the backwoods badass, the hick from the sticks, Jackson Montgomery, as he has signed on to be a uh, roster member, as we mentioned before. The man right there. He stands waiting and just cool as can be. Not overexcited, uh, a little, I mean, a little just nonchalant about the whole situation, right? He stands in the ring, taunt, waving, taunting to the fans. And then out comes this, this goofy, I mean, look at him. Shorty shorts, he's got his uh, Caucasians patch there on his shirt. And his cowboy boots, the man is fired up. The man is ready to rep America in the biggest way possible. The Pyros shoot off. Jackson Montgomery coming in um, as the commissioner of um, SWF Uprising. He's played MLB baseball. He's been in the UFC, but his home is always here in SWF. He cannot stay away from the ring. That's uh, the mainstay here for Jackson. He it always comes back to the squared circle. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, and this dude, he's a, he fights. He's like Leo McKay. He's like Vice. This man will fight you. And we're gonna see how he holds up against Ryan Adams, who is much bigger, um, most likely a little faster, just as a weight difference. Jackson is shorter, a little thicker, but and a little erratic, as we can see. So let's get this thing going here tonight. I'm interested to see these two men go at it. Earlier we spoke of Gold Rush. There's a lot going on at Gold Rush. We know for a fact Duke Zenda and Siler Jordan are going to go at it, assuming uh, Alex Corzo doesn't win tonight. If Alex Corzo gets the victory, then Duke will face off against Alex Corzo at Gold Rush. Then we have Jay Wolf taking on... Uh, Oh, nice clothesline there from Jackson. We have Jay Wolf taking on uh, Seb Abbott for the Maverick Championship. Seb only in that matchup last week. I'm, I'm not quite sure um, how he's going to handle the, you know, being in there with somebody who's been active these last couple of weeks. So we, we know that those two matches are definitely happening. Look at that shoulder right to the lower back. My goodness. We'll also have a six-man tag team matchup. The Fallen Kingdom will take on the Sons of Carnage. Look at that Falcon Arrow. Very nice move there from Ryan Adams. We had Mason Foster and Ryan Riley go at it in the first round of the Lone Star Championship Tournament. And there's just kind of been, look at that. There's just been kind of a stuff brewing right with those guys. Oh, uppercut there from Jackson. So those are a handful of matches that we do have there. More to come. And there's a special announcement we mentioned on Twitter that is also coming with Gold Rush. And it does have to do with gold. Jackson Montgomery. Look at this. Picking up Ryan Adams by the throat. Oh, my gosh. Look at just. Oh, man. What a backbreaker. Oh, he is not done. He's going to walk around the ring a little bit and drop him down for a second one. Jackson now. Oh, Ryan gets out of it with a nice uppercut there. Jackson's tossed into the corner, and Ryan follows it. Oh, misses, misses the kick, and Jackson takes full advantage here. Oh, neck breaker into that clothesline move, and then Jackson's going to start slamming the head of Ryan Adams, and quickly... Goes for the pin here. No. Just a one count. Ryan Adams. I have uh, some high high expectation out of Ryan Adams this season. I really want to see him do well. Jackson Montgomery with a knee across Adams' head. And now with a rear choke right here. He's got those hands right under the chin of Ryan Adams. And is just pulling. Trying to pop his head off like an action figure. And Jackson, oh, there we go. Ryan Adams with a jawbreaker sends Jackson down to the mat. And quickly coming after him, big right hand, hooking him up. Falcon Arrow, very nice move there. And Adams, again, not waiting for Jackson to catch his breath or anything like that. Oh, Jackson got him that time. And face first goes Adams, and Jackson starts the 10 count. And finishes the 10 count. Ryan Adams stumbles out to the center of the ring. Rolls away from Jackson's kick, though. Back into the corner goes Jackson. And again, diving out of the way, rolling out of the way of, of uh, Ryan Adams' attack. Kick to the midsection and a big knee right to the face of the backwards badass. Chops and punches and chops and a big kick right into the back, sending Jackson face first down into the mat. Man. Ryan Adams fired up right now, that's for sure. And now, maybe he's catching his breath, taking a break. I don't know if we would, uh, if that's a smart move, and Jackson makes him pay. Luthez laying those big right hands across the face of Ryan Adams. As you can see, Black Wire Authentic. That is uh, the official T-shirt maker for Call. Look at this clothesline turning Jackson inside out. Going for the pin as well. One, two, no. Jackson 
able to kick out. Blackwire Authentic is the official cloth clothing line for Call. Go we'll check them out at Frosty052 on Twitter. Jackson gets out of it. Uppercut. Kick to the midsection. Oh, boy. Look at this. Slinging this man. He's over six feet tall, for crying out loud. And quickly, Jackson begins taunting to the front row. He's got Adams up, but Adams, nice arm drag to get out of it there. And he's going to pick Jackson up. Sling him over the top rope. Oh my goodness, look at Adams. It immediately goes to the top turnbuckle. Jackson stumbling up to his feet. Oh, Ryan Adams face first to the outside, but still able to keep his wits about him as he slides back into the ring. Holy cow. Oh, big elbow knocking Jackson down. And again, Adams is just kind of dragging him around, keeping him away from the ropes, only to get himself closer in a one count. Jackson's wondering where the ref was on that. And Ryan Adams with another Falcon Arrow. Quickly dragging Jackson away from the ropes. Gets, in him, gets himself a little closer as we just saw. Not close enough to those ropes to possibly use them as leverage. Ryan Adams getting a little upset with himself, it looks like. Big left. Oh, and a spear. The spear from Jackson Montgomery, and that could be it. One, two, and it is. My goodness, Ryan Adams falls victim to the spear of Jackson Montgomery. That uh, That's a pretty, pretty hard spear from such a stocky man. The Backwoods Badass with the victory over Ryan Adams. Maybe maybe the former commissioner has something to show us here on Shootout.
Real shit, no lie. Look, I've been up four days straight without sleep. I seen a level nigga really wanna leave. Pick up the pen and the pad, I bust my ass. Do a tank that shit, and I'ma spit the realest. Back off of the back, like I'm an omen, like a fucking insomnia. Cop a country, act riding a rhyme scheme. Living out a pipe dream. The moment of life beams means that the flow is strange from the brain of this young rap fiend. I'ma kill it like nobody ever did it. You dig it? I know you. Well, folks, all eight men are in the ring, and Hunter King and Evelyn Reeves are going to start things off, and Hunter King with a big backbreaker. Leo McKay there getting his side of the ring fired up, and Lance doing the same. Look at over there, Mike, uh, Lord Draven with his back turned, Zach Graves there with the white face paint, Kid Hades on the left, and of course, Evelyn, Re Evelyn Reeves in the ring. They have Vice over there in the purple, Lance there, on, as you can see, on his trunks. Leo and Hunter King in the blue right now. So this match was supposed to happen last week, but after the attack from Kid Hades on Leo McKay, Leo had enough and went after Kid in the backstage area, and it just got wild from there. So this match was pushed to, to tonight, and oh, it, it's, it's going to be wild. I have no doubt about that. Look at Hunter King. Hopping down and flipping pile driver. Oh my God, Evelyn, all the way across the ring. Hunter King now, he's got Reeves up. He's gonna put him in the corner. Who's he bringing in? Nobody, because Reeves kicks him. Oh, okay. These guys really going back and forth at each other. Into the corner again goes Reeves, and it looks like they're bringing in Vice. Drop toe hold, elbow across the lower back. Vice in the ring. Now Vice and Leo McKay last season had their differences. They're gonna put him aside here tonight to take on the Freaks. And a huge clothesline from the Haitian Prince, whatever you wanna call him. Vice is really working Reeves over, good lordy. Able to get out of it, but Vice delivers another clothesline. Reeves, though, quick to stand up and delivers a calf kick. And he's going to head over to his corner and tag in Kid Hades. Hades, though, with the oh man, with that big running knee. Now Hades felt um, attacking Leo McKay would bring him back to being worthy once again. We will have to see if that proves to be true. Vice sending Hades across, and no. Hades with a kick to the stomach and a big knee to the chin of Vice, sending him down to the mat and now working over that arm. This match is going to be crazy. I have no doubt about it. With eight people, it's just going to be nuts. Into the corner goes Vice. Look at this. Everybody jumps down so Hades can get in there. My gosh. Roundhouse to the side of the head, but Vice caught that one. Oh, and a running neck breaker. Nice job there from Vice. Although, having Kid Hades in his own corner, not the smartest idea is just like that. Everybody wants to tag over in Vice's corner, in the face's corner. Vice doesn't quite need it just yet, it looks like, because he's going to send Evelyn into the corner. Who's he bringing in now? Doesn't look like anybody. Oh, stomping away, and look at Hunter King. He's gonna tag in and start going to town, and Vice now shaking those hips. Here comes Lance, and he starts putting the boots to Evelyn Reeves. Oh my goodness, these guys are just carousel around, putting boots to the chest of Evelyn Reeves, and Hunter King finally comes in, and look at Lance Roman's drop kick by Hunter King. These guys are wild. Here goes the, oh, Michael Graves, or excuse me. 
Michael Graves. Zach Graves breaks up the pin. Vice tags out to Hunter King. We got to take a short break. Hello, folks. My name is Puma, and I am the owner of SWF. I want to take a minute to talk to you about Black Wire Authentic, the official clothing line of Call Wrestling. Just within the last few weeks, Black Wire Authentic has released around 50 shirts, and I can't tell you how awesome some of these shirts are, if not all of them are absolutely fantastic. Here is a look at some of my absolute favorites. We have got Siler Jordan, we've got James Frost, and we of course have the SWF shirt. Go over, check them out at Frosty052. Welcome back folks, Evelyn Reeves here is stalking Vice. Oh, reversal from Vice now. Vice in no man's land, don't wanna be over there. Into the corner goes Reeves. Hunter King still on the outside. And now, so is Reeves. Hunter King getting trampled over there. Oh, man. Baseball slide by Vice. Puts Evelyn Reeves down on the mat. Now Evelyn Reeves is in a bad part of town. Back into the ring he goes. Vice making his way in as well. So far, we've yet to see Draven and Leo McKay. Is that... I mean, is that by plan? Is that by... Who knows? Lance now back in the ring. He's going to pick up Reeves. And we... Oh, nice jawbreaker there. Oh, kick to the midsection. What? Pump handle. Oh, pump handle X-Factor from Evelyn Reeves. And he is going to send Lance back into the corner. Zach Graves coming in. No. Lance is able to get out of this whole situation. And he's dragging Reeves over. They've done a nice job of isolating Evelyn Reeves. Keeping him away from his, his teammates. And just as I say that, Lance gets tossed into the corner. And here comes Zach Graves. Look at this. Standing on the shoulders. Two freaks high. And he's dumped right on top of Lance Romance. And Romance just twice the size of Zach Graham. I mean, he's huge. Oh, look at this. Look at Reeves on the outside. And he drops. He drops Lance Romance down like a Dream Street style move. Huge clothesline from this Mohawk menace. Lance, you're in a bad way over here, brother. You're going to have to do something about this. Jeez. His head nearly bouncing off those steel ropes. Or excuse me, steel steps. Nice shot there. And another clothesline. Now it's just Zach Graves just putting the screws to Lance Romance. Count of six right now. Face first into the steel steps. Are we going to see a count out? A double count out? Oh. And Lance just getting tossed over and over into that turnbuckle. Finally, nine. Graves slides in. Not like this. And a ten count. And the Freaks get the victory over the faces. Lance Romance unable to get back into the ring in time. Look at these crazy people. Oh my god, that was a hell of a matchup. I gotta say, that was a good matchup. I enjoyed watching that. The teamwork of these two teams, off the charts. Off the charts. Triple power bomb, Graves and Reeves. Great match out of all these men. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, is two men that one has been here just a short time but the other has been here quite some time and mr storm had some things to say directly to puma about his time here but we're going to hold off on that because right now coming to the ring is somebody who has worked his ass off in this profession and it it rang true and that, that it proved himself once and for all. Omari Williams, ladies and gentlemen, your Grand Prix wrestling champion. That's right. GPW champion. 
Go check them out on YouTube. Amari Williams coming in. He uh, got his start, and I'm happy to say his first federation to be a part of was SWF last season. And in this short year, year and a half, he has done great things in the professional wrestling world. Very proud of this man. Very happy that he's your GPW champion. Congratulations on that, Amari. We've got him facing off against Brett Storm. As I said, Brett Storm had some uh, choice words to Puma about what's been happening lately. Brett Storm not too happy about it. This man has been around forever here in SWF. Before it was SWF, there is Vice, Brett Storm, Jay Wolf. These guys have been around for a long time. And Brett Storm wants to know where his due is. Well, Brett, you're getting your shot tonight, baby. You're taking on the GPW champion. And while he does not hold a title here in, o uh, excuse me, in SWF, the man still is a champion. Brett Storm, XWP champion, hardcore champion. This man has held multiple titles outside of SWF. Last year, he kind of lost his gourd a little bit, and Morpheus was born and had his shot at the television championship. He actually, he snuck his way into that matchup and damn near won. Quite surprised he didn't win that matchup. But Brett Storm, longtime competitor here in SWF, definitely deserves his due. He's got it coming up here against Amari Williams. We call him Brett the Terminator, the unstoppable. I mean, this man is, he's a rough dude. He is a rough dude. Definitely not somebody you want to bump into on accident while at the bar, that's for sure. Because he'll take a Coors Light bottle and crack it over your dome. Brett Storm climbs into the ring and Omari giving him his space. Let's see what's in you, Brett Storm. Let's see what you got here tonight. These fans are fired up. Family events here at shootout. Ref rings that bell, center of the ring, and look at Storm ducking a punch from Williams and immediately going after the legs. Oh, but but Mari can do the same. Nice dragon screw. And what a what a start off move there from Storm. Really focusing on those legs. That was a great move. Great job starting off Brett. Oh, man, look at that single arm back body drop. You don't see that a lot these days. Great move there from Amari. He's dragging Storm now towards the center of the ring. Right in the middle of those Blackwire authentic logos. And a, oh, man, a shot. At, oh, good Lord. Amari kind of has a cushion up there. Got his little fro going, got a cushion. Brett Storm has no cushion. Huge shot right to the back of the neck. Right where the neck meets the, the back of the head there. Ooh. Elbows now to the face of Storm. Has his back turned to Williams. Look at this. Oh, man. What a slam there by Williams. And he is going to work over the knee now of Storm and quickly go down for the pin. Just a one count there from the forgotten one, he calls himself. Nice snapmare, and he's going to lock it in. Hooking that elbow right across the chin and start cranking. Getting your neck twisted like that, getting your head pulled down towards your chest, and you're not, you can't get to your chest, not a good position to be in. Not a good position at all. Omari, though, is really cranking away. My goodness, and he's going to slam Brett down to the mat. Quickly go for the pin. One, no. 
My goodness, Omari seems to be in full control. Commentator's curse, though, seems to get him as Brett Storm takes his feet out from under him. Now standing over him and talking a little bit of trash and dropping those boots to him. Not letting him get up to his feet and just stomping away at the legs of Williams. And another single arm back body drop. He's going to drag Storm up and a nice spinning elbow. Damn near knocks all the teeth out of Storm's mouth right out. He's going to drag Brett away from the ropes. Oh, face first and just look at the cockiness coming off of Omari. Brett gets back up to his feet just in time to get kicked in the midsection. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, man, into a cutter. Holy cow. Powerbomb into a cutter. That could be it for Brett. One, two. Wow. My goodness. Brett, my man. You got to do better. Omari with the victory over Brett Storm. Great job there from the GPW champion. No, we're not going to see this. Oh, man. Ref, get in there and stop this. This is madness. Unnecessary. Get him off of him, ref. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, two men brand new to SWF. Now this first one, this first man, he had his opportunity in an eight man battle royal matchup to become number one contender for the SWF Mavericks Championship. And while he did come up short, he did impress, that's for sure. So, excuse me. Making his way to the ring right now is Elliot Collins. Elliot was in that match with Jay Wolf, Hunter King, James Gaines, uh, Lord Draven, Malcolm Black, Lance, Romance, and Amari Williams. As we know, Jay ended up winning that matchup. But Elliot is back here in episode four to prove why he belongs here in the SWF, why the New Jersey Saint, why this Yankee deserves a spot and deserves to stay here in the South in Southern Wrestling Federation. I'm excited to see what he does in a singles matchup because a lot of these guys, we, we only saw them in those eight-man battle royals. We haven't seen them in single matches yet. Still not with Hunter King, with Lord Draven, um, with... Lance and Amari, we just saw him get the victory there uh, over Brett Storm. So a lot of these people we haven't seen in single matches. It's, it's his opponent included here tonight. So Zach, oh, excuse me. I've got my paper here in front of me and I'm looking at it and saw Zach Graves' name. Elliot Collins, the New Jersey Saint. Got that New Jersey Devils logo on his on his tights. A little hockey fan. Not a lot of hockey happening in the South. That's for sure. We don't get a lot of ice down here. Elliot Collins, his opponent, the Savage, John Robb. He was in episode two in a fatal four-way matchup between Zach Graves, Jackson Montgomery, and Kid Hades, and he won that matchup. So John won a fatal four-way. This is his first singles matchup and brand spanking new to SWF. I'm excited to see what he brings to the table here in singles competition. Not to say that uh, multi-man matches are easier, but there's a lot, lot going on in those matches. And yeah, you're facing one-on-one -on -one against people, but there's still a lot happening. Right now you're focused, these guys all their energy and all their focus is on each other. Let's get this going. Ref checks if they're ready. Rob, oh, pushing Collins back into the corner. He's got the Fort Worth Skyline 
tattooed across his back. And a gentleman's breakup right there. Nice. Get, geez, big knee right to the face of Collins. But Collins reverses the clothesline and sends him down. That would have sent Collins outside the ring had Rob hit that clothesline. But he gets a spinning power slam right there. Oh, jumping flatliner from Collins. And he's going to kick the back of Rob. Flip him over now. Look at this. Step over. Monkey flip. One of my one of my personally favorite moves. Rob's going to slide outside the ring to uh, catch his breath. Stop seeing stars for a minute. And we're going to see that power slam on the outside. My goodness. That mat's out there, but it's only about half an inch thick and not very forgiving on the concrete out there. His fans start standing up so they can see the action. Whoa. Collins went for a huge clothesline. But Rob reverses it with the big rock bottom out there. And Rob's favorite move. Second or third time. Second time here on the outside. And then back in the ring goes Collins as the re uh, referee gets to a count of seven. Uh-oh. Look at this. Picks him up. Wheel Barrow drops him face first. Down onto the mat. And a kick to the side of the head by Collins, goes in for a sling blade, nice move, nice move. The speed of Collins, I think, is gonna uh, definitely be an advantage over Rob. Rob has the strength, Collins has the speed. Big close, jeez. Knocked him out of his boots almost right there. And look at this, hooking him up and just forearms right to the side of the head and the forehead of Elliot Collins, man, Rob, Living up to his name, the Savage. Going down for the pin. Just a one count, though. Rob not wasting any time at all and taking out the knee of Collins. And now Collins looked to be trying to roll out of the ring there, catch his breath this time. But Rob's not going to let him form shot by Collins. Oh, and a face buster of his own. That full Nelson face buster. Oh, boy. Collins cranked up, RKO. And quickly going for the pin here. One, two, no, whoa. John Robb kicks out of the RKO and a punch right to the jaw. And now Collins is gonna be able to get himself out of the ring just to the apron though. John Robb Waiting and drives Collins right out onto the mat, right outside off the apron there, and a kick to the back. I, I you know, I was gonna say John had the momentum going in, but I mean Collins hits that RKO. Oh, and a big insecurity to the back of the head, disorienting John Robb. And again, look at it, just kicks to the kidneys, follows up. Jeez, that, is a, that was a huge boot right to the chin. And then now bending the wrist and the other arm there. Good lordy. Knees to the back. Nice finishing off that move there by Collins. And he's going to keep at it. Rob, oh, pushes Collins away. Still got a little bit of strength in him. No, Collins backs out. And, oh, my goodness. Nice move there from John. He goes for the pin, but just a one count. These guys are putting on one hell of a matchup. I'm enjoying this one for sure. Reverse DDT. Uh-oh. John's getting Elliot up to his feet. Hooks him up. Look at this. It's going to get him away from the ropes. Pick him way up. Power bomb to Elliot Collins. Looked like he was crucified there on the mat. John goes down for the pin. One, two, three, and that's it. Savage, John Robb gets the victory after that huge last ride powerbomb. Sit out, last ride powerbomb. And the man from TX gets a victory over the New Jersey Saints. And he sticks his hand out and says, brother, great match. And Collins shakes it. Sportsmanship here in SWF.
following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Southern Championship. Well, folks, you heard the lady. This is the main event of the evening. As we mentioned earlier in this broadcast, Alex Corzo a little upset not getting his title shot. But Siler Jordan, being the champion that he is, apparently, it has offered up his title in a matchup tonight. So, Alex Corzo, Siler Jordan, they are going at it for the Lone Star Championship right here tonight on Shootout. I don't know if we've ever had a title defended on a television, or excuse me, on a episodic show other than maybe the television champion championship. Well, I take that back. Tyler Jordan defended the internet championship almost twice a show last season until that uh, Elimination Chamber matchup where Luke Luger ended up winning it from him. As we speak about him, he is here. The natural born thriller, Siler Jordan now. Last week we saw these guys take on each other in a tag team matchup where Siler Jordan teamed up with James Frost and Alex Corzo teamed up with Seb Abbott. And as we saw at the beginning of the broadcast, in that replay, Siler Jordan did make Alex Corzo tap out to the WTF lock. Now are we gonna see the same? Is it gonna happen here tonight? Or is Alex Corzo gonna shock the world and become SWF Lone Star Champion? I mean, anything can happen in the SWF, right? So we also still have to talk about Duke Zenda as Duke won his tournament matches all the way from round one to defeating SDC in the uh, semifinals to get the opportunity to face Tyler Jordan at Gold Rush, which is coming soon. What happens if Alex wins? Well, Duke still gets his title shot. Duke's gonna go on and be in the World Championship matchup regardless of who the champion is, whether it's Tyler Jordan or it is Alex Corzo. But with such a short time period in between this match and Gold Rush, how do you change your game plan say if Alex does win so we, we've got a lot to uh, factor in here with this match a lot of implications and I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens here Tyler Jordan while his be he is best for business I'm quite interested uh, to see if Alex can back up to the back up the hype his own hype and rise to the occasion here the Lone Star Championship is on the line, folks. Introducing the challenger from Tijuana, Mexico, weighing in at 203 pounds, Colossus Alex Coles. Introducing the champion from the edge of reality, weighing in at 208 pounds, he is the Southern Champion, Jordan. My goodness, listen to the boos at the announcement of Siler Jordan, your SWF champion. The ref takes it over to Alex Corzo. He's fired up. Hold it up so we can see what the prize is in this matchup. It's the SWF Lone Star Championship here on Shootout. Alex Corzo, Siler Jordan, these guys are ready to get going here. They lock up in the center of the ring. And Alex starting off big with a neck breaker. And now putting the boots to the chest of Siler Jordan. Now we'll say this about Siler Jordan, whether he's coming out of the gate fast or he takes a beating at first the man ends matches I'm just laying out the facts as much as I hate to say them look at Alex Corzo here hooking up Siler jo good lord that has really got to put a lot of pressure on the knee but look at Siler Jordan using that core to come up and start laying those hands 
to Corzo, and he hits him with a big knee right across the chest. Corzo has, oh, quickly, a pin here. One, not even a one count. Corzo was able to kick out before the ref's hand hit the mat. Oh, Jordan going with a kick, and Corzo stops it. These guys going back and forth here, and Corzo out to the mat outside. Oh, big shot there, and Corzo now in control. Corzo coming in with the absolute right to be upset. Um, it was unclear whether his contract was going to be renewed or not, and that is why the championship committee made the decision that they did in giving the Lone Star Championship just straight away to Siler Jordan. And the same for Seb Abbott and the uh, Maverick Championship as uh, Luke Luger didn't come back. His contract was not renewed, and so the Internet Championship was defunct, and the Television Championship became the Maverick Championship. So um, that is the decision made by the Championship Committee. Look at Corzo. Nice move there. To go ahead and give those titles to the previous owners. Now we had two world champions come back. It was unexpected, but it happened. And, oh, Jordan gets the knees up right across the rib cage of Alex Corzo there. And Jordan quickly after him. Oh, cross arm DDT there. The decision was made to give it to Jordan. Oh, the Colossus. That could be it. One. Two, no, just a two count. And um, Alex Corzo has every right to be upset, and he has every right to be in this matchup now. Kick to the midsection. Oh, he went for the knee, and Jordan reversed it. But quick, back up to his feet. Good Lord. There it is. That dragon cutter from Siler Jordan. What a, what a succession of moves there. One, two, no. Jordan is flabbergasted. Corzo went for that running knee. Jordan reversed. Corzo pops up and immediately hits him. Uh-oh, here we go. We know Siler Jordan is a submission specialist. Getting people in that WTWF lock and that dragon submission. Look at this, though. Corzo able to get out of it. Oh, kick to the back. Nice job there by Corzo to remove himself. Snap suplex. Oh, and he's fired up. He is not going to let anything get in his way here. Jordan with the reversal of the belly-to-belly -belly kick to the side of the face. Oh, that was a Corzo move. It looked like Jordan was going in for some sort of move, but Corzo reversed it into a sidewalk slam, a spinning sidewalk slam, and again laying the boots to the chest of Siler Jordan. Jordan, though, they're going to drag and screw, take Corzo down on the mat. And here we go. Jordan is... Uh-oh. This is... This can never be good. Face first into the mat. Almost a DDT of sorts. Jordan now, he's got Corzo up. Lower back into the turnbuckle, and he's going to throw him down like a pile of garbage. And here we're going to see it. Corzo is a little away from the ropes at this time. Look at this. Is Corzo going to tap out right here on shootout? And we're going to definitely see Duke versus Siler Jordan. But this time, Siler lets go. He might be toying with Corzo. Who knows? And here it is. Look at this. He's got him in the throw mora. But quickly, quickly, Corzo power bombs him to get out of it. Oh, my gosh. Quite unexpected, to say the least. And now these two guys are going at it back and forth. And Corzo, now with the upper hand, Jordan rolls out of the ring. And Corzo can't get to him in time. Jordan says he's done. Uh, if Jordan gets counted out, Corzo does win the match, but doesn't win the championship. So there is that. So who knows? Here's Duke Zend. Oh, my God, a big right hand by Duke, and he's going to send... Jordan back into the ring. Oh, my gosh. And then quickly, look at this. Corzo with the knee. Corzo with the knee to Siler Jordan. And quickly goes for the pin here. The ref. Get down. One, two, three. Oh, my God. He did it. 
I Alex Corzo just beat Siler Jordan for the Lone Star Championship. And it, I, I lost for words. You hear the ring announcer say the new champion is Alex Corzo. Oh my gosh. What a shocking turn of events here. It looks like Duke Zinn is going to be taking on Alex Corzo at Gold Rush. Now just wait a damn minute. Alex Corzo, you may have won your championship here tonight and I'm gonna let that happen. But Duke Zinda had no right to interfere in this matchup. Duke, I no doubt think that you thought Alex Corzo was gonna be an easier opponent to defeat than Siler Jordan and you saw your opportunity to make that happen and you took it. But that's just not gonna slide here in SWNF and I am not gonna let that stand so not only Duke are you gonna be facing Alex Corzo at Gold Rush it is now a triple threat match Duke Zenda versus Alex Corzo versus Siler Jordan time to get rested up fellas it's a gold rush <laughs>